The sign on the highway is still the same, but things are different on Jackass Hill these days. Mark Twain's cabin has had a makeover. Mm -hmm. To clear the ground and build a new foundation, well, put new foundation rocks. It's the result of a some three-year project undertaken by the Sonora Sunrise Rotary Club in 2002. The second time in history the cabins had a facelift. Well, <laughs> I, th I think it would be a nice camping spot back in the old days, but I wouldn't want to live in it. <laughs> it's very small. Yes. <laughs> but it's cool. I like it. Although, as it turns out, it isn't the exact cabin Mark Twain lived in. Actually, the original cabin sat here on this piece of land, just up the road a little bit. But by 1910, that cabin really needed a makeover. So in 1922, a man named Henry Tinas was hired to build a replica, an entirely new cabin that was to look like the old one. Well, pretty near the same, because he knew what the old cabin looked like, because he was here when the old cabin was still here. Dave Tinas knows this story by heart. Here's the original picture of the cabin. After all, Henry was his grandfather, and it was because of Dave's great-grandfather, Steve Gillis, that's him right there, that Mark Twain came here in the first place. They worked together on the Virginia City Enterprise. And then they went to San Francisco, where Steve got into a little scrape walking home one night. And he came by Casey's bar, and uh, Casey was beaten up on a, uh, one of his patrons, and Grandpa went in and hit Casey over the head with a beer bottle and almost killed him. Twain bailed Steve out of jail and the two fled to the gold country where Steve's two brothers had the cabin on Jackass Hill. Twain stayed a few months, long enough to hear the tale in an Angel's Camp tavern that he would turn into the short story the celebrated jumping frog of Calaveras County that launched his literary career. That's what's cool about coming to places like this because you can like, try and put yourself in their position and try and imagine what they were doing. There is still one burrow on Jackass Hill, so named because of the pack trains of donkeys that came this way, furnishing nightly concerts, as the site's historic plaque puts it. Molly belongs to Dave, who lives here on the hill, and enjoys talking to visitors about the cabin and the part his ancestors played in literary history. Your grandfather built the cabin? Yeah. Oh, neat. Yeah something he admits he never paid much attention to as a kid. But now, uh, do you like to look back on it and think that uh, your family played a part in America's literary history? Oh, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. From Mark Twain's cabin on Jackass Hill, Jonathan Mum, News 10.